On today's show, Devin Booker keeps the Phoenix Suns win streak alive with a clutch three-pointer against the New York Knicks. How have the Suns managed to reel off seven straight wins despite having so many guys in and out of the lineup in the early part of this NBA season? Plus, how important has Eric Gordon been as an off-season free agent acquisition for the Phoenix Suns? We're going to break it all down coming up right here at Locked on NBA. You are Locked on NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. PrizePix is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you just pick more than or less than on two to six players and their stat projections and watch the winnings roll in prize picks is so simple to play. You can make your picks and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. They've got quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types, which is what makes prize picks the number one DFS app on the market. And with basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league, a league created specifically for combo projections that include two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, you can do LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three pointers made plus reception. So if you've been thinking about getting into daily fantasy sports, you've got to check out prize picks or go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA, all lowercase for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. Joining us now is the host of Locked On Suns, Brendan Clean, who you can track down wherever you listen to your podcast and on YouTube. Just search Locked On Suns. Brendan, the Phoenix Suns, one of the hottest teams in the NBA right now, a seven-game win streak. The streak's still alive, courtesy of a last-second three-pointer by Devin Booker to close out the New York Knicks. Let's start right there. Walk us through the end of the Suns game against the Knicks and and how Booker was able to hit that big-time three. It felt like a game the Knicks always win. You know, they somehow eke out a big burst from Jalen Brunson, a big burst from Julius Randle. It doesn't feel like the Suns necessarily have an answer for those guys in isolation. There's a stretch from like the three minute mark to the one minute mark where no one scores. You're seeing Hacka Mitchell Robinson. You're seeing uh, Booker kind of worried about Mitchell Robinson when he's trying to score and nobody can hit a bucket. Then all of a sudden, you know, uh, some things start to go in. Randall gets a score. Booker gets a score. And then that sets up the tie game, 113. And Booker gets off of it as we expected he would have to because the Knicks were relentlessly double teaming him all night. Somehow they let him get it back and gets back into single coverage. Takes the shot that I think he knew would be the only one he was going to get. If he drove, they were going to maul him. You know, you just throw everything they could. And so he rose up, didn't even need three. It's a tie game. It's not like they were down two or down three and makes it over Randall over multiple defenders. And it's just another one of these moments for this guy who tends to give us a lot every season, but this is the first and yeah, it keeps the momentum going. Uh, Kevin Durant lists back to back in Memphis and New York over the weekend and the Suns come away with two victories, mostly because that dude is so good. 28 points for Devin Booker in this win against the Knicks. I know you're going to have us covered for a full breakdown on that over at Locked On Suns. Now, Brennan, what has been kind of, because the Suns still aren't healthy, right? They've got guys constantly in and out of the lineup this season. So what has been the key to this seven-game win streak after kind of a rough start where they're finally kind of starting to find their groove a little bit? Well, I think, Having two MVP caliber players certainly helps, you know, and that's the the Suns went through a rut like this last year. I mean, every team deals with stuff like this, but the Suns in December of last season, while Booker was dealing with a hamstring and groin injury, they couldn't get anything going. And I think it's a big reason why you saw them turn around and make the Kevin Durant trade that they did in February. And you fast forward to now and those guys are able to lift a lot, you know, regular season games, you can win a lot of those even with. Bradley Beal out most of the season and and some different guys shuffling in and out and not certain who your rotation is going to be. But I think between those two and you give a lot of credit to the coaching staff who have adapted quickly, you know, Josh Okogie late start 
kind of decision tonight because Grayson Allen woke up sick. Okay, great. Well, you put Josh Okogi in. All right, actually, that's not working. He's not really guarding Jalen Brunson all that well. Brunson goes for 35 and 8. Pivot. Who are we playing instead? What are we doing instead? And they get enough from some of the rest of the role players. So they've just had the kind of band-aid approach and, you know, good defense, good shooters, and superstar players. That's been their recipe. And they're, you know, back toward the top of the West finally after a weird start. I know you brought up the coaching staff kind of there for a moment. How would you kind of assess, you know, the the new look coaching staff, Frank Vogel and company so far this season? I think you'd have to be impressed. You know, we'll, I think time will tell whether they assemble a playoff caliber and, you know, championship caliber scheme and, and set, kind of set up on both sides of the court, but they've gone pretty simple offensively, which I think makes sense when you have the, the star talent that the Suns do. And, defensively it's it's pretty recognizable for anybody who's watched Frank Vogel it's going to be size aggressive taking away the paint trying to force turnovers turn defense into offense taking care of the glass defending in transition those are the hallmarks of Vogel and I think they've come through so this was a roster that was completely overhauled the second most tenured son is Josh Okoge who signed last summer in July of 2022 and so to be where they are 11 and six with that all said, I think you'd have to feel like Vogel did a pretty good job so far. And, you know, once Beal and Durant get back and we finally see this team, the real version of it, I, you know, we'll we'll reevaluate then, but a plus so far, I think. Yeah. And I know we, we haven't seen this team at full strength yet, right? Still yet to see the big three playing together. And one of the biggest questions about how this, trio of stars was going to function is okay well now all the onus is on basically Devin Booker to be point Booker so far though this season Booker averaging a career high eight and a half assists per game how has it looked so far with him having the ball in his hands being responsible for orchestrating the Suns offense he's a point guard now I mean whatever that that means in 2023 right like every team has a different sort of point guard Nicole Jokic is a point guard right like but Anybody who watched this guy in the postseason last year, I think would have understood he was ready for this. It's just a matter of how consistently can he do it? Does he get hurt? Is it too much burden physically? All all those questions I think are natural when a player takes on more responsibility, even than the star level responsibility he already had in previous seasons. But he's handled that. You know, he did have some weird injuries early on, but it hasn't seemed to bother him. His efficiency is totally fine. He's not turning it over much at all. 11 assists to two turnovers against New York on Sunday night. So that that any any Suns fan knew, you know, Bradley Beal was not going to be the point guard of this team. Kevin Durant, any of these guys, it was going to be Book. And I think he's aced that test as well as he possibly could have. And he'll have even more, you know, weapons at his disposal when the rest of the guys are back. One kind of, I think, underrated free agency signing here. You talk about the Suns, like, overhauling their entire roster. Eric Gordon, former Houston Rocket Eric Gordon, uh, might I add. I, he, it feels like he's been very instrumental to, you know, some of the Suns' success early on here. He had 25 in this game, this most recent game against the Knicks. Just how important has he been to this team, you know, whether it's coming off the bench, slotting into the starting lineup, and kind of what do you envision his role being when this team is fully healthy and they've got, you know, Durant and Beal back in the lineup on a more consistent basis? Yeah, there will be an interesting conversation to have when everybody's healthy, who between Gordon and Allen is starting, is finishing. They've both been very good. They've both been integral to this team, staying afloat on offense, especially with a lack of star talent, healthy at times. Gordon specifically, I mean, we were joking about this on Locked On Suns postgame today, and 538.com, which is, you know, a, a nerdy basketball and other sports stats website that doesn't really exist anymore. They used to have those calculators where you could plug in a player and see what their actual monetary value should be based on their performance. I, Gordon's making like $3 million this year. I have a feeling if that still existed, it, it would be mid, uh, you know, mid tier starter money, like $15 million or something. I mean, he has been everything that they've needed. He's defended fours a lot of nights because they don't want Durant to have to do that. He's handling the ball and initiating offense to get Booker a little bit more in space, like kind of everything that they have wanted him to do, he's been able to do. And he's having a a vintage season. He's showing us that the past few years in Houston, maybe, you know, weren't the best to evaluate him in a losing situation. And he's, he's back. 
when will we get to see this Suns team ultimately at a full strength with Durant and Beal and Booker, the big three that we've yet to see in action? What will ultimately happen with that fifth starting spot between Eric Gordon and Grayson Allen? You'll have us covered for all that and so much more over at Locked On Suns. Brendan, thanks for stopping by Locked On NBA with me. Thanks. I'll be back when they make their debut, hopefully. (laughs) 